Yeah. Psh. Gosh. That's really, uh... Puts her second in the turf as well, which is good. Prime Colony, coming for ya. Alright, we have everybody. Alright, game, not so ruthless. I think I said it probably in the last time, uh, last episode I played it, uh, this game. I think it's a little bit more forgiving. It doesn't seem to take my horses away as much, because when it used to take them away, I was still at a pretty lowish level. Now I think that I'm at a higher level. There's a little bit more of a leniency barrier, but I shouldn't abuse that. So Delta Dream, 58 feel. That tells me nothing. And Southpaw, plenty of abilities. And still nothing about the leg type. Oh, dear. And we were supposed to win that race. But that also was a turf race. They keep wanting him to race on dirt, so now I know he is for sure a dirt horse. So I think in that situation, they're saying he's good enough to win this race as a turf horse. Because, I mean, that's a pretty weak field. But, obviously, if his preference is still dirt, then any minor thing going wrong can always kind of set that in the wrong direction. So, um, yeah, I'm just going to look for any dirt race, even a grade one. But those are, like, few and far between. See, this is what stinks. Um, the World J, J Cup... You know what, I'm going to put him in this race, because maybe... I don't know what his odds will be. I know he's a strong horse, I know he can be strong, but... I'm not sure what his... Uh, where his positioning will be in that particular event. That's all the way in October, so... Hopefully there's some flexibility there. I mean, I still finish in the top five. I don't, I don't think I'll finish worse than that, but winning... That that's what I want to make sure we can do with him. Um, so who else? Frugal. Just keeping you on just the grade one campaign. Just whatever race seems suitable. I'm just putting her in it. I'm not even thinking twice. But since she is in the turf, we got to make sure we uh, keep her in that fight. She could still try to win out and snatch it away from Prime Colonnay. Paris Cup. Yep. She's four years old. She's really at the right time to be doing this anyway. So, Rider right Shallow, you're good. September, I think you're good. I race with four horses. Hey, Galaxy Star, do I retire you now? She hasn't won in a couple of races. Hmm. Oh, let me save. I need to think. I just don't want to risk losing her. I, I don't. Not that I think I will, but again, could have just one bad race. Things getting a little bit tricky now that she's on the decline. Um... Then again, who can I even... I can't even replace her, because seven of the broodmares are pregnant. Or they've conceived, I think, at this point, so... Actually, no, um... No space for her. Or Cleopatra right now. Yeah, Moontrapper's the only one that didn't conceive, so... And... I still want to keep her back there because, like, she's still giving us really solid horses. Like, it's not even just the attachment thing. It's not like that. Like, she's still proving she's she can give really quality horses. So, um, I feel like until at least we've gotten maybe... I mean, we have three from her now. I, I could replace her, in all honesty. Um, like, she's reliable. Man, this is tricky. That's the only thing I could do. The thing is, I can't retire both Cleopatra and Galaxy Star. Uh, Galaxy Star has better endurance. Her speed is really, really dropping. Cleopatra is still more put together, I think, to be competitive. Um, so, if anything, racing with her 
for a little bit longer would probably be safer. I'm just worried about losing Galaxy Star. It's been a while since I've had a horse that's had better stamina than speed at this level. Like it's a little bit tricky, so I don't want to like get caught up in trying to figure it out and then end up losing the horse. Uh, let me see who else is from Moon Trapper back there. I've gotten enough from her at this point, so whatever works out. Like Vivid Eyes, her daughter, um, she's better than Moon Trapper, so I know for sure at least we'll be able to retire her as a broodmare as long as things work out, and um, that'd be obviously having a better moon trapper gosh east side band five star future which he's been that way for a while and four stars on everybody except for rapid blades so the one-year-olds are all developing quite nicely four star future here for point black um four star future here for storm owl it's a cult east side band five star philly from diamond plant and tigris to stone they're saying she's going to be a monster I hope so. Lonely Bolero on Butterfly Effect. Three star future. This is the weakest of the group so far. Four star power. I'm not worried. I think this filly will be fine. I think she'll be really fun. Golden Boy and Free Fear. She's four stars. She's going to be solid. Formal Opera Moon Trapper. Four stars. And then Golden Boy Black Ruby. So, um... So, yeah. We have... Two horses, not including this uh, one-year-old filly. I really like the look of this classy and smart filly because she looks a lot like Free Fear. Free Fear is, um, she has that, that type of complexion. So really like, yeah, they all kind of look quite different. All very pretty. Um, so that's just that group. Let's look at this group. Oh yeah, we actually have okay. We have plenty for Moon Trapper. P plenty where I would be satisfied, because I, I would suspect since she's been so good so far that these uh, foals from her will also turn out to be strong and hopefully well enough to be used for breeding, which means Moon Trapper's purpose would have been fulfilled. The purpose of using her Moon Trapper for breeding isn't just to keep her back there for 20 years. It's for her to give us really strong quality horses that we could then use for breeding on the stud side and the broodmare side. You know, uh, Moon Trapper's daughters could end up, will end up obviously being her replacement at some point. But the only downside is. Um, I don't think there's any anybody else who want to retire. This is a fairy singer on Moon Trapper Falls. Should be really interesting. But I just thought about it. Like, if I were to retire Galaxy Star now, she's replacing Moon Trapper, but that leaves no space for any horse connected with Moon Trapper. I suppose that's not really a major problem because, like. Two of them are still on track racing, and the other two uh, are not even close to racing yet. So maybe, um, obviously, once time rolls around, we'll we'll just automatically just have a spot for them at some point. Um, but a lot of these broodmares back here, they're not too old. Like, can I see their ages now? Oh, Chasing Heart, she's actually thirteen, which is still isn't old to me. In fact, she's she's the oldest. Everybody else is. Under a, a 10. Moon Trapper is 11. So Chasing Hearts has been back here the longest. But 8, 8, 6. You know, like they're not old at all. So we don't need to replace any of these girls yet if they're working. And you see we have some quality ones. Real Happy could be replaced. Um, yeah, actually now I think about it. Toxic Blonde, Real Happy... Yeah, the both of them could be replaced. Heading into next year. Um, I guess I just, for the time being, I really just need to make sure I, I just hit my goals with uh, Galaxy Star. But I guess at any point, if I do feel just... If I start to feel uneasy about keeping her on track, I just retire her and she'll replace Moon Trapper because we've at least... Now 
have four horses from Moon Trapper, so um, that's enough. It's more than I thought um, I was actually going to get. I was only remember planning on doing like one or two initially way in the beginning, so yeah. Um, they want you in an open. And the thing, she doesn't even have a handicap anymore, really? <laughs> That's how far down the line she has now fallen to the game. Where it's like, yeah, we don't even need to give you a handicap for this race. But she needs one in there. Okay. Guess as long as she's running against other older horses, no handicap. Okay. Alright. Um... Cleopatra, what an absolute queen, right? Gosh, this is the only thing with so many horses. I feel like the progress takes forever to make because you're just racing like 20 times a week. <laughs> like, we're only in August. We've, I, gosh, we started this in June. We've moved two months in an hour and a half in this episode. And again, the two-year-olds and the tack take up quite a bit of time, but only two months. <laughs> How many horses do we even have now? I don't know if I've ever played with this many horses in this game. I gotta be honest. Let's see, it's eight there from Major River. And then here's another eight up to Solar Rider, so that's 16. And uh, that would be eight if there's another horse above Cleopatra for 24. 23, we're racing with 23 horses. I know that's not the highest number by any means, but that's a lot, bro. That's so many different horses to be keeping track of. But for what it's worth, most of them are, are really solid, you know? And some of them are obviously extremely good, so it's not like we have a lot of bad horses. That's why we still have a lot. You know, at a time period when we first started getting more of these horses, like a lot of them... A number of them, I should say, were not great, so it was uh, it was easier to kind of be like, okay, I'm gonna let you go, I'm gonna retire you early. But like all these horses, they're most of them are winning at a pretty high level, you know, like their win percentage is over 50, so retiring them doesn't make sense under any level. Um, quite a bit of racing here in August. I kind of want to get through this. Um, gosh, 3 a.m. I'll see what we can get through. Gosh, I keep forgetting to check for Clear Jewel. I do not want to miss the opportunity to snag that horse. I need her. We need her. She's going to be a great addition. Native Spirit, new two-year-old filly making her debut. She's up in this open six furlong. Expected to finish second. by double house three horse. There is the native spirit from. He's stargazing out of Chasing Hearts. She should be strong. Um, yeah, definitely she should be strong. She has a good pedigree on both sides. so Strength should not be an issue. I just don't know what the rest of her is going to be like. You can always get horses that are strong, but they just don't have the right parameters to be a successful high winning percentage racehorse. I don't know if that, that'll be her. It shouldn't be. She has a Hall of Famer and her mother and a should have been Hall of Famer and her father, but I messed that up for him. I mean, he had double digit grade one wins, double digit wins. A couple of titles. So, for what it's worth, Native Spirit, she has a pretty solid pedigree of championship winning horses. So she has quite a bar to, to match up to. I don't know what her leg type is. I'm just letting her kind of run. She seems pretty pretty easy right now. Two furlongs to go. So like she's max stamina and just holding with a furlong and a half. See if she can put this field away. No? Second favorite. Come on now. Oh, overwhipped. Overwhipped. I, I wasn't paying attention. I looked away for one second. Stretch burst. Thank goodness just to keep her in second. Uh, that probably was the win. I botched that for her. 
I looked away for one second. I don't know why, and I overwhipped. So thank goodness. Terrible. Um. Yeah, I mean, positioning is probably always going to be bad because I just don't know. It's question marks surrounding it. Spurt wasn't great because of the overwhipping. So yeah. Uh, she feels fine. Really, she feels fine. Again, I feel the strength in there. Didn't give me any issues. I, I think that that Philly will be good. Another debut here, Bay City. We're putting her in a grade three right from the gate. She's my project Philly, and she's actually expected to finish second, so that's a good uh, good sign. And there she is from He's Stargazing out of Moon Trapper. She should be good. I hope so, because Moon Trapper so far has been two for two with horses on track. This is the third one. So now I think about it, yeah, five horses from Moon Trapper. Three are on track. Two are still um in the pasture so or out, out in the pasture so yeah that's plenty of horses for moon trapper it's way more than i expected i could definitely retire galaxy star now because in all honesty like there's still quite a number of different breedings i'd want to do with moon trapper but i just feel like at this point it's not worth taking away from breeding a, a much stronger horse legitimately like, I think having five from Moon Trapper is fine, so I, I, sh I don't need to breed her with, like, every other stud that's back there just to see what we get. Like, we have enough. 10-8 fraction. I mean, I'm just letting Bay City run. I don't know what they want me to do here. <laughs> just letting her run and see how she adjusts. Just want to get her off this rough. Come on, my girl. Let's go. See how she digs in. Where are we supposed to finish? Second? Not looking like that's going to happen. But that felt like a really bad bad stretch run, didn't it? Lost so much momentum. And then she's just going backwards. Wow. It's just amazing. But uh, I kind of felt that. The second she she was saying we were going too slow, I that's when I was too too far behind. Uh that's not a good debut. Uh, that's it's a sour taste. Mm. I definitely feel I have no idea what the horse is capable of. I just feel like I just kind of squandered that away. That's uh, gosh, that's annoying, man. Oh dear. Nine furlongs. That's all they're going to tell me that she has stretch burst for Bay City. Wow. So freaking helpful. Thank you. Seven and a half furlongs. Gonna get another chance with her soon. I wanna try to redeem myself there. Hey if Spirit, you did well. Um six furlong grade three, that's fine. Yeah, nine furlongs, thank you. And turf. Oh, wow. And stretch burst. Like, no, I need to know leg type. Yes, you know, I need to know leg type. Heart rating, I think, is important for your two year olds in the beginning because sometimes if you lose a head to head and you don't hit your goals on your two year olds whose stats may not be developed yet, you can lose your horses really easy. So I think it's important to at least know their leg type. Most important, know their positioning, understand. If you need to get them ahead of other horses to avoid losing a head to head, whatever the case that is. Um, power and stamina, for what it's worth, obviously. Speed. I think like speed is easy to gauge. I don't know if you necessarily need to know what the number is. But those are just some things I think that are important. Um, It's a thing too. We get so many horses. I'm double checking because I'm like, sometimes I think we lose a horse or we lost one. It's like, oh, we didn't. But just want to make sure because again, you're gonna put everybody in a race on a regular basis. Um, it's gonna be kind of annoying if like Clear Jewel ends up popping up in like one of these races with us and like she's running against us. Now Cosmic Page is in that Chicago race. Okay, no clear jewel. Maybe she's just not here this week. 
I'm checking every category. I don't know what the game has in mind for her. Alright. Five races here today. Uh, we'll knock these out. And then... Probably will be up. It is late after all. And, uh... Yeah, that's really about it. Two-year-old filly, bet on me. Newest uh, of our two-year-old fillies. She'll be making her debut here today. Yeah, she's the ninth favorite. And she's from Formal Opera Adelie's Gold. Beautiful, beautiful look to her. So we have to beat one horse. Like, why not just give us, like, tenth? Why, you know, like, we have to beat one horse. <sighs> Winged Pride. Like, just give us the finish in last place goal. Not that you have to beat at least one, but... Nonetheless, from former opera, Adelie's Gold. Let's see how she does. It's always an exciting and somewhat anxiety-filled time with the two-year-olds hitting the track. Some of them you know you're going to hit it right off with, and some of them maybe not so much. So, that's kind of where I'm at. <laughs> Because in this game, they don't tell you squat. See, 2003, they reveal everything to you, so you pretty much already have an idea of what horses you'll be strong with and which ones you won't. This game, sometimes you just kind of have to race with them and see how they all work. And that's the only sign that you have. Because there's no indicator of stats. Hide and go seek. Question marks. Guess who? Um, I don't know where she wants to run. I don't really feel like she's quite comfortable with anything yet. Like she's not fighting with me, but just the feel doesn't seem to be on, so... I'm just kind of going to keep her up here. See how she runs. Move, 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 move. She just, like, keeps drifting into that horse's butt. That's not what I wanted to do. Maybe we were fine, and she would just drift again. Okay, she's beating one horse. She has stretch burst. Almost beat the... Gosh, that could have been so much better, bro. Like, we moved one spot over too much after she was supposed to be settled. But that wasn't my doing. Regardless, she finishes ninth. We hit our goal. <sighs> See on the position, like, all the time. Because I don't have a clue. What is new? But, hit our goal. Cleopatra, she's up in the grade three. She's the favorite. I need to win with her. I didn't win with Galaxy Star. Um, need to win with Cleopatra, but just going to be paying attention. Still don't really know what happened in that Galaxy Star race, but um, thank goodness we had the flexibility of where we finished. But still. And they're off. That was a beautiful start. All right, drop you all the way to the back. I say it all the time when I race with her. Really a shame she wasn't a proceeder because she gets out well every time just to have to settle all the way for the back. I know, my girl, for whatever reason, according to you, you like to race in the back. <laughs> Don't be mad at me. Be mad at yourself. Uh, it's always been with Cleopatra. Sometimes I race her this far off the pace. Sometimes she's a lot closer. On this type of track, I'll race her that far back. First couple of furlongs, and I'll just kind of start to move her up slowly. Especially once we get to under five furlongs, just to make sure we're in a good spot to see how the field's moving. Like, I can move her up now. She'll be fine. Get her on the outside, make sure she's ready to attack. We're gonna keep it tight. This horse is gonna try to bump me, that's fine. We're gonna run you. Get her going now. Get her going now. 
She's got plenty of stamina, really good run. She's got to dig in here. That's all she's got to do. All she's got to do is dig in, and there she goes. See, that's all it takes for Cleopatra. It's like... It is like clockwork with her, man. She can still win so well. She is the closer that I've always wanted. She really is. Truly. Like she's not obviously as fast as she used to be, so you don't see like that blazing speed. But you guys remember, at her prime, she was really fast when we you know, got it to work with her. Really, really fast. So she, she is truly an enjoyable closer to work with. And she has the stamina to make it work, which is even more important. I don't have to stress about getting her going early to get her up to the front. I hate having a closer who doesn't have the stamina to really make that that running style work you know you have to, to still have some sort of endurance to make it work and to win rich strike is the example of a closer that's strong enough to be you know fast and competitive but he doesn't always he doesn't always have what it what is required at the end of the race to actually win out even though he can still finish in the top five you know you still need a little bit more in that type of situation you know what i mean you have to be extremely fast and then still have the endurance to get past the rest of the horses because a lot of those horses that are really strong that are proceeders they have the endurance to make that work till the end so if you're a closer you're not going to you know run past them like rich strike was able to fortunately do in the derby that's a one in rare type of situation that usually doesn't happen right most closers don't win okay <laughs> That's one time where a closer wins, and of course, it's one of the biggest races in the horse racing world, so of course, it gets a lot of attention. That could happen at a regular grade two, grade three track, and it's not going to be that talked about. Um, September Sky, she's up in the Super Mile in GWS Sprint Territory. She's tied with her stable mate, Little Vixen, for first. She's looking really nice on the left side, man. Really strong. I'm liking it a lot. <laughs> but yeah. Uh, I'm curious if Rich Strike will like actually start to win maybe grade ones. He could still be developing as well. Like I, I always kind of wonder if he's still going through like a green phase, where he's been in some big races now, but he's still not quite dialed in a hundred percent. You know, the Derby was like a a rush type of win. Um, I, I I just wonder if he's still a bit green. He just seems like he's strong enough to be able to race for years on end. I don't see him being a horse that they'd have to retire early as long as he stays healthy. And again, he is a horse that's legitimately from Secretariat down the line. So, again, I think that strength is there. I just wonder. Like, you hear about that. Some horses don't really start winning grade ones, like the lower level grade ones, and a lot of grade twos sometimes until they're five years old. I just wonder if that'll be Rich Strike, you know what I mean? Because, like, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of demand from him, for him, you know, as a, um, as a sire like these other, like, flight line. Like, he doesn't have that type of attention at all. So I wonder if, like, it's not even worth really retiring him now. Maybe it's better to continue to race him and just to see if you can actually try to get maybe a couple more wins out of him. I think that would make the long-term option of him being a sire a lot more desirable to, to people, right? Here we go, September Sky. And uh, that's... Lonely Club trying to keep up with this. I almost overwhipped. I almost overwhipped. Holy crap. If I would have done that, that would have been game over. September Sky, she's still so good at this mile like this. That she makes that easy. 10-9 fraction on the straight. She's running a 10-9 fraction on the straight. Not just like in cruise control. Like that's in the heat of the race. 10-9. My horses don't do that often. She's 88 speed. She's... She's a lot faster than she probably looks, man. September Sky can fly, bro. She is so good at the mile. It's amazing. <laughs> September Sky can fly. Can we, like, say that? <laughs> it's her sixth grade one win, and she's still leading now definitively in the GWS sprint for the time being. Two and a half length winner over Lonely Club. Makes it look easy. 
My goodness, man. September Sky can fly, dude. This Philly is awesome. <laughs> this Philly is a blast. Diamond Plan and Awesome Autumn. Psh, yeah, she's freaking sweet. Moving on. Another great one. Nine and a half furlongs from Miss Vaporwave. Fourth favorite. I'm trying to uh, figure things out with her. It's a little bit of a slope. Her stats aren't bad, but the temper's not good. And uh, just trying to figure out how to get back on a winning streak with her. She's from Moonbee out of Balls and Bottom. No latent ability, so we're just purely relying on her pedigree and her stats to, to win. We have no abilities that we can rely on. It's not like we always use our abilities on some of our best horses anyways, but... They're in the game, and there's plenty of them, so they're beneficial to have, for sure. And the abilities are really characteristics of some racehorses that, you know, have been documented and, uh, you know, kind of anal st uh, studied, I should say, and analyzed in real life. So, like, horses that have really strong heart, horses that are gritty, though those are characteristics. Those are personality characteristics. There are some horses that, for what it's worth... When they're in a head-to-head, -head, they just want to keep fighting and try to beat that other horde, like uh, the, that other horse, excuse me, in the herd. Like it's definitely a thing. It's like people don't give animals enough respect. Like in some aspects, they're much smarter than you realize. I mean, horses are filled with adrenaline. They like running, obviously, and racing. But regardless. Um, and some of them, not all of them, obviously. There are some that could care less. They're no different than people. <laughs> you know, they just show up because they have to, and then that's it. Like, they're not invested in the racing part. It's literally no different than, like, being on, like, a cross-country or, like, a track and field team or something like that, you know? You had kids... Um, that were really competitive and wanted to race. And then other kids that were just there because of the obligation of having to be on the team for whatever reason. And they're not really invested in, like, the competitive aspect. Horses are no different. Literally no different. Okay, there we go. Uh, she's got a nice run here. Should be able to make this work. Oh, dig in, my girl. Let's go. Oh, really good run. Really good run. Don't over whip. Keep it safe. I'll oh, stay strong. She's going to tire out. Oh, five may have got us. Wow. Yeah, five may have just got us. I don't know. That's going to be close. She just holds on. <laughs> what a close race. Man, that was a much better response. She felt more lively there. I wonder what that's about. Is it a temper rating? It's not even like she's really giving me problems. It's just like... <laughs> it's just this on and off... Of, offness of like one race she feels completely fine and the next race she feels a little off. I don't know. It's her second grade one win. So congratulations to Miss Vaporwave. And uh, she wasn't even supposed to win that race. We're the fourth favorite. Yeah, she's um, she's really a good representation of Moon being awesome Autumn, honestly. Like when I think about it, she's the best representation of what a horse for them from those two would would behave like. Potential, good, questionable temper, questionable just behavior. Like that's really the type of horse she is. That's how Moonby was. We didn't really know what, what he was going to be like. We had high hopes. I feel like that seems to pass down in that pedigree. Does it not? We don't really know what they're going to be capable of. We know they have potential. We know they have speed, whatever. But, like, that's it. We don't really know how much they're going to win and how often. So, it's always with the moon horses king b like i <laughs> wonder what it is about that pedigree and that's probably one of the most fan favorite pedigrees on the channel anyways platinum stakes here gws turp territory with soy conquistador she's second favorite my proud steel 
Yeah, it's an okay field, I guess. I mean, it's some decent horses here that shouldn't be messed with, but could be tougher. Anyways, Miss Conquistador, she's uh, pretty solid. She's not the fastest, though, only 80. If she had, like, 88, that'd be uh, a lot stronger of a case. But still, 70 stamina. She's where she needs to be. Uh, we could certainly win this. That's obviously the goal. And, uh, yeah, this is GWS ter territory, so... This could get her on the board. If she's not already. I can't remember if she has three points or not. If she has three points, a win here could obviously elevate her closer to f second. Either way, we gotta win. Diamond playing with the record. Let's see how this goes. The horses are in the gate. And they're off. That was a All right. start. Great start. Gosh, she gets out so well, man. It's so nice to have a horse that knows how to get out well, especially when they need to be at the front. I mean, there's nothing like a really good disciplined procedure. Makes life a lot easier, man. All right. It's a moderate pace. We're not going slow. Twelve three though, so we are slowing it down now. Around the second turn, down the back stretch. It is stale. Great arrow leading by about half a length. Green Friday in behind, and then there's Global Song with. <laughs> not doing that. But, uh. We're gonna start getting Soy Conquistador in the conversation a bit. It's our race to win. Field's moving now. That's fine. That's fine. I'm not worried. I'm not worried. Now we're gonna go. You, di you didn't lose the head-to-head. -head. You're fine, my girl. You just gotta run off this turn. You're fine. There's last corner leader. You're fine. She's thinking she's lost the head-to-head. -head. Like, you have not. Just gotta hang on there. Ah, uh, two is really... I don't know who that is, but that horse is closing. Gosh, I think we just got there in time. Why have all these races been super close? Like, the AI don't usually close this good. They've been doing that a lot lately. Thank goodness we hold on to win. And it is a fourth grade one win for Soy Conquistador. She's actually, I think she has the most out of her, her uh, class. So, wow, congratulations to this girl. She is, uh, she's making it work, man. She is making it work. Let's go. Platinum stick. That's a big win. That's a GWS turf win at 10 furlongs. <laughs> Let's go. So we can keys the door. Fourth grade one victory. Just wins by a head over Pr yeah, Proud Steel. How could I forget? I figured it was the, um, yeah, actually the favorite. We weren't even supposed to win that race. Horse was closing like scary, man. I hate when I see that happening, so. Man, great win for So we can keys the door. That's big time. Was not... Expecting her to really be that strong. But yeah, uh, I actually win for two of the two out of the four uh, fillies in that same class. Vaporwave and Conquistador both got really good grade ones. And September Sky dominated in her mile. Uh, good days for everybody, actually. Really. Girls absolutely killing it. What's new? So you see September Sky, she extends her lead, but Little Vixen, she'll be back up in a sprint race soon. But for now, it's really September Sky's championship, I think, so far. But again, I'm going to keep Little Vixen in the conversation just to give her a fair chance. But September Sky, she's really, really, she's such a flyer at the mile, man. And wow, like I said, Soy Conquistador, that win puts her all the way up to second place. Vivid Eye, she still has a chance, too, because all she has to do is win a grade one, and she'll be right there. Frugal Lark, gosh, that's three of my horses. So I can keep the door, Vivid Eyes, and Frugal Lark, all competing for the turf. I don't really know who to prioritize. I'm really just going to keep them all in races. 
really just enhances our chances of winning with one of our horses anyways. It's kind of the benefit of actually running multiple horses in a championship sometimes. If you don't really have a preference of who gets it, then you just ensure that at least you're going to get it and not the AI. So we have three horses here, two here, and then only one in the dirt. But gosh, if I could get clear jewel by the time September and October roll around, that could change things. Maybe, but for now, this is my Masters Dirt Championship to win. So that's the update here. And uh, still have a lot of racing to go, but we're two hours in. I'm tired. So what I'm going to do, double check on these races. September Sky. Okay, Little Vixen, have you raced yet? No. See, I want to give her a chance, but she's, still, she's about to race now, actually. So, you know, let me do that. I want to give her a chance. So we'll have two more races here, or three? Three, okay. All right, let me get everybody else in a race. September Sky. Uh, I'm going to give the next G1 to Little Vixen, so I'm just going to ignore it for September Sky. Paris Mile, so that'll be for Little Vixen. Ah, is she even going to be ready for that now that I think about it? Probably not. Okay, well, September Sky, we just want to try to give you some more points. Running her in the green here is not a terrible idea. That's literally next week. Little Vixen is running as we speak. She's not going to be ready for that. So we'll give that to September Sky. Give her a little bit of a cushion. Then I can give Little Vixen a little bit of a run. And we'll have a safe spot. I won't have to worry about the AI trying to ruin our time with our horses there. So that actually gives us quite a, quite a bit to play with. So Miss Vaporwave, first place in that Chicago Stakes. That was really a big win. Seven wins out of ten starts, two grade ones. For Moon be out of all is a bottom. Princess Cup. Uh, that's fine with me. So I can keys the door. Yeah, she's solid, man. Solid girl. Diamond plan out of Chasing Hearts. Four grade ones and nine starts already. She's only three years old. She's on a tear, man. She's on a tear. Diamond plan in our first Hall of Famer Chasing Hearts. So, since she's in the turf hunt, we got to keep her on the turf path. Uh, another suitable race. Whenever that pops up. Sydney. Perfect. That's your race, my girl. Um, I think we're good on everything else. So I'm going to knock out these last two or three. And then, uh, yeah, that'll be it. So if you guys have enjoyed, bet on me. I forgot I raced you. And a yeah, game just 47 feel, 9 to 12. That's all they're telling me. And then your abilities. Not telling me your leg type, which is the most important thing. Gosh dang it. And they want you running on dirt. Fine. That's fine. I'm not going to argue with them on that. Um. Okay, so I think we're good. Um, oh, Red Wings, gosh. I feel like you... 15 feel, 41 heart, yikes. But they told me the most important thing. Turf, 7 furlong, Proceeder. That's going to change a lot. Silver Bullet, Awesome Autumn, and great turf rating. Imagine with a dirt... Um, a dirt sire that this filly doesn't get a good dirt rating. That'd be pretty bonkers. The game doesn't want her running on the dirt. Oh boy, that's annoying. So no dirt, huh? I'm definitely going to put her in this race just because if they give her a last place finish goal, no pressure. I want to know what her dirt rating is. So if we hopefully get a last place uh, goal to hit and we finish better than that, that should boost our uh, boost our chances. So three more races. Um... Cleopatra. They want her in the Empress Cup. I don't really think we're trying to do that. I know she could probably still have a chance to win it, but I don't mind running her in these grade threes and these grade twos. It's kind of fun just to kind of drop her in class and still have her be competitive. 
And I want to keep winning with her. That's the whole point. Like, this is not just to kill time. It's like to make sure we're also still winning. Um, 10 for long grade 3. Yeah, I fear she'd have an impost there. I just want to look for something nice and easy. Crazy thing is, she still doesn't want to wait too long between races, so she's still pretty competitive. Now, these are good grade 1s, but I don't want to run her in these. 7 furlongs, I think that's too short. Handicap here in this open. Running a horse like her in an open makes me nervous for some reason, but I think it'll be fine. Okay, three more races to go. Let's knock them out. Ooh, wait, let me check. No clear jewel. No clear jewel. Oh, I hope that horse doesn't disappear on me. That's happened. When I've been pursuing a horse in the market, or not in the market, but like from one of the trainers, and then I've had a chance to ride them a couple of times. Then it's like the one time I probably need to ride them to win and to claim them. Then they just disappear. It, it's happened several times. It's annoying. Hope it's not happening with her. We're up with Golden Time. I've been raced with uh, this dude in a while. Last favorite. I mean, last positioning. He's on the decline. And, um... I'm just kind of racing him until I feel we can retire him. That's really about it. <laughs> He's still a pretty fun closer to work with, especially on the dirt, so... I'm happy that we have at least a lot of horses that um, I'm able to have fun with, you know? Like, some of them have similar riding styles, some of them are different, but... As long as they're, as long as they're enjoyable, like it makes for a good time. Keeps things fresh, you know. This game would be so boring if you just had to ride a horse like the same exact way all the time with no differ, uh, you know, no variation, no um, no difference in strategy or tactics. Like that would that would really stink, okay. wouldn't it? So I like that they give you the flexibility. I'm moving them up now because, well, don't need to be sitting back there. Is this really the highest his stamina is going to be? Where are we oh, I forgot. We're supposed to finish 12th. Yeah. Go, go, go. Go, 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 go. It's so funny. Like, we were... We just had, like, a head of steam, and then it's just, like, all oh, the rest of the horses started to go, so then he just, like, hits a brick wall, but he's actually still fighting quite well. Less than a furlong left to go, and... What I say? He's still fun, man. He's still a fun colt to race on the dirt, even though he's past his prime because he peaks so early. Four years old, finishes in fourth out of twelfth. Smashes the goal, bro. Smashes it. Double S on the spurt. Yes, sir. Feel wasn't great, but who cares? Smash our goal. Little Vixen, she's up in the lead sprints. This is just a sprint race to maybe get her a sprint title. Competitive field, runaway times, favorite Scotch Crystals here, general ending. Not a race that we can sleep on. Top three is her goal. Certainly she wins this race. Keeps her in good form to try out her next GWS sprint bid because I'm still giving her an opportunity to do so. Oh, look how pretty little Vixen is. She's a beaut, ain't she? Well, let's get this done, my girl. I know they say top three and we're expected to finish third. How dare the market rule against us, but it's fun. Let's just try to actually win and prove them wrong. Okay, it's a pretty even start. Oh, stay in, stay in line, stay in line. I'm gonna try that really tricky thing for a little bit. Okay. Well, she's handled the 
first two furlongs really well. Two furlongs to go. Okay, let's go. Uh, I feel like I missed time that. I feel like I missed time that. I don't know what's gonna happen. Three is closing. We're closing in on the nine. I don't know what's happening. Oh, stretch burst. Little vixen. Wow. What'd I say? <sighs> that was looking really sketchy for a second, wasn't it? My gosh. She did what she needed to do, man. She really dug in there. That's why I said what I said. I'm like, I know we're getting top three, but we really should be able to win this race. And she gets it done. She proved she's a sprinter. She can win at five four, uh, furlongs. You still have to be pretty fast to do that. Third grade one win there for Little Vixen. And that's why I still want to give her a chance in the GWS sprint as well. Because you see, uh, yeah, she, she's a sprinter in her own right as well. Um, no, September Sky is obviously one year older, so I think it's more important to win with her before she loses the chances uh, to win because we've made that mistake. Um, but still, I think it's fair to give Little Vixen a chance just in case. But September Sky is the faster horse. I mean, technically, if anything, she is the sprinter. But uh, Vixen, she's making a good case for herself as a three year old, so I'm still going to give her a chance. Valley King up in the lead stakes. He's the favorite now. He's been growing for what seems like forever, but late, late growth type. He's five years old. And, uh, yeah, his speed and stamina both, they could hit the mid 80s. That'd be really nice with the power increase as well. He's got a lot going on, man. But, uh, we're supposed to win this. Got last quarter leader, proceeder, or mid. I mean, he has the stamina to run really close to the leader as a proceeder. So, like I said, if I have a horse that can run right behind the leader, that's what I'm going to do. I am going to keep whoever is leading the race right in my sights. They will never be more than two lengths away from me. Especially if I have a horse that has stamina above 70, I know we can run with them. Now, there's if it's one of those races where they're out in front by like you know 10 lengths and you're on a horse that doesn't have the stamina to match that then yeah you just gotta know when to pick your battles and you gotta drop your horse back but Rally King this dude 78 79 stamina and speed it's nice to have those two numbers be that close at that margin that gives you a lot of flexibility man you know it's a horse that can run the endurance races, run the long ones, and still be strong to run a mile because he's not slow either, you know? If he hits the mid-80s, he could probably still win sprint titles for sure, too. Watch out. Um, ah, did not mean to do that. Crap. My bad. Settle down, you're good. Did not mean to do that. I'd prefer to have him closer to the front. I've just kind of settled him back here because I realized maybe uh, saving a little bit of ground right now would be more ideal. And try to move him up. The inside's not looking free, though, actually, now I think about it. So I'm going to kind of move him on the outside here. Forgot we're on a straight anyways. There's no more turns. I could have kept them to the inside and just boxed ourselves in for no reason at all. That would have been miserable. We got the stamina to make it work. Let's go, my boy. Let's go. Let's go. Oh, I overwhipped. Crap, crap, crap. We gotta recover. We gotta recover. Uh, I don't know why I keep doing that. We're the favorite. We should be able to dig in here. Come on. Yup. Ah, uh, this is the beauty of having a horse with 78, 79 stamina that takes three years to develop. You can just dig in, grit taps in perfectly, and you just kick away. And that's with me making a mistake of overwhipping. Valley King, what a win. What a win, my boy. Good stuff. Let's freaking go, man. It's only a second grade one win, but that's literally what I mean. Sometimes those type of horses that take that while long to develop, or take that long to develop, totally worth it, dude. 
especially with again speed and stamina that are basically the same stat it's now approaching 80 that, that's a lot of uh, upfront power and speed contact did not bother him at all like Valley King strong dude but I, I would expect nothing less from a vivid legend horse of course I expect nothing less all right, so uh, really a good week. Two wins and then a, a fourth place when we were supposed to finish at last. Let's go. Let's go. That makes having all these horses not like that bad. Like the fact that we're winning with most of them. Um, Valley King. And then 71 power as well, and 73 speed. This is what I mean. Those four stats being what they are, that does give you a lot of control to run your horse in a wide range. Like, the game says 8 to 11. You could easily run him probably 14 furlongs or 16, and he would be fine. Like, he can run the King Cup, you know? So, like, that's really good. Vivid, Vivid Legend out of Chasing Hearts. Yep, you're finally showing us, uh, finally showing us your guns, brother. And, um, it's a good time. Run them in the King Cup. I mean, yeah, this is the path they want them on now. I'm, I'm fine with that. I mean, we can finally win grade one, so probably should take advantage of that. Golden time. Three wins. Am I just trying to stack wins with them? <laughs> Can't remember if that's what I'm trying to do. But, um... I suppose I'll just keep doing that until I remember, or get bored, or decide to switch. Give them as long of a layoff as we can. Cool. He's okay with not racing for a while. Gonna save him for this grade three all the way in December because why not? All right, little vixen. Eighty-six speed. She's not even that much. I mean, she's liter literally like what a half a step behind September Sky. They're actually both really quick for where they are I should say obviously really quick really quick lightning fast is 90 whatever 90 number you want to say and up they're not there but for where they are now in this field of horses they're quick enough that's what I'm saying um you need a GWS sprint race so whatever's going to be available for you she'll be in the green for the London mile or I can, you know, I can hold her for the Paris Sprint. I mean, we don't need to have somebody in this race. I'd rather run her at five. She won at five already again. Impulse might be too much, really. Oh, that's that's wild, bro. No impulse here for the London Mile, but she'll be in the green. It's like, do you risk running her in that race? This is tough, man. Do I run her in this race to avoid the impost? But she won't be at 100%. Do I run her in this race with the impost? I would like to still run her in the blue, but gosh, carrying 33 pounds is that? I mean, that's or that's an extra 13 pounds. That's it's a really annoying decision. I don't understand how that works in this game. I'm not blaming the game. I just. <laughs> Just annoyed that that's a decision that we have to make because it's important. I mean, September Sky, she can probably bounce back and run in either of those. So realistically, I would rather have little... I would rather her run in the blue. I, I would, but I'm worried if that handicap is going to really come back to bite us. I don't know. Like, why is she having an impost here? I just, I don't understand. She's 6 to 10 furlongs, and 
Okay, she's... Gosh, she's on a really good... Eight wins and ten starts and three grade ones. I mean, she is really strong for what it's worth. But still, to have an impulse for the five furlong, man... Ugh, this is so conflicting. Gosh, this is a really annoying, really annoying decision. I feel like racing her with the impulse is worth it, but she will be carrying more weight than usual. I'm just worried if that's... Uh, you know what? I'm going to take the chance. It's just like, if I run her in this mile race just to avoid the impulse, and she's in the green, yes, I suppose we could test how strong of a horse she is, but the point of this is to see if we can keep her in the GWS uh, campaign as well. I'm going to carry the weight. I just... You know, they're trying so hard to keep me away from that race. I, I think we should still... Give it a shot with her. Because what if she's really good at those races? I can't avoid them and then not race her in grade ones. Like, I'm not doing that. If I have to carry the weight, I'll carry the weight. If she's a really good horse, then she she could handle it, you know? Obviously, every horse can't handle the extra weight. Sometimes you have those super horses that you can handle those handicaps with every blue moon, and you can still get the dubs. That's what I'm trying to see with her. But she's not slow, so she has the speed to make it work. Will she carry it well? That's the question. I thought I just heard like a duck, but it was probably whatever one of the Galbracer animals are in the back. We're still just getting to September. Still so much racing left to go. It's going to do it though for this episode. I am tired. It's been two and a half hours almost, but hopefully you guys have enjoyed. Uh, I guess I'll pro I need to come back with another one. I'm I hate, you guys know I hate when we're dragging in this game. It's the only downside of racing with more than like 15 horses. It takes so long to make progress because it's really opportunities for all your horses like every week. So like you have to do them. Um, so annoying. But uh, it's part of the game, part of the grind. So I appreciate you guys. Much love. Until next time, horse racing. Have a great and fantastic day. I'll see you later. And goodbye.